All right, today we're discussing the first step to writing deep characters. And what we're going to look at is how characters relate to plot, the core driver that moves character forward, and the false belief at the heart of some characters. So the first thing is how characters relate to plot. And we spent some time exploring drama, plots, story structure. But there's an important thing for us to understand that plots don't just happen. Plots are caused, and the source of plot is character. Characters create plot. And what we're doing today is we're laying the groundwork for how to create those deep characters that are going to organically create plot. So if we create these characters correctly or uh, in a way that will drive the story forward, then we don't have to feel like our plot is forced. It will just arise naturally from what the characters tend to do. So the first idea in this is that there should be some sort of emptiness within the character. There should be some sort of void. And this is how we craft a character that will naturally create plot. So that emptiness essentially drives the character to take action in some way. So we're going to go into a couple of examples, but let's think about you know, in Toy Story, for instance, Woody is driven by his his need to be the top toy and his need to be loved by Andy. And that's part of his emptiness. And when he doesn't have that, he's driven to get that back. Now, we're also going to look at different techniques that we can use to stir the character's emptiness, which will basically move them to action. It's sort of the impetus. And we usually do this at the story's inciting incident, but we'll look at a couple of examples of those. So the first thing to realize is that we see characters with voids or with emptinesses all the time. And there's even this idea of like an I want song. And we see this in, uh, well, you know, particularly Disney songs or Disney movies in the 90s all the time, right? So the Little Mermaid, uh, she wants to be part of this bigger world. She wants to be part of something else. She wants something. Hercules, he can go the distance. He wants to know where he came from. Uh, he wants to be bigger than he is. and. There can also be this sort of slight variation on this that I like to think of as the dissatisfied with the status quo song, where the character doesn't exactly know what they want. They just know that they're not happy with what they have. And we see this with Belle in Beauty and the Beast, where she wants to be more, um, she wants more than this provincial life. We see this with Jack Skellington in The Nightmare Before Christmas, where he wants, you know, he's got this emptiness in his bones. He says it, right? He's got this void and he doesn't know exactly how to fill it, but he needs to figure out a way to do that. In The Nightmare Before Christmas, we're going to offer him an opportunity to do that. Now, uh, Andrew Stanton has this talk called The the Clues of a, a Great Story, I think it is, and it's a fantastic talk. But one of the things he says is that Pixar, when they were writing Toy Story, for instance, they specifically did not want an I Want song. They very much intentionally did not want to do it the way that Disney movies in the 90s had done it. They didn't want the character singing No Happy Village, all that stuff. But they still functionally expressed the I want or what the character's void is, what the character's emptiness is. But instead of having the character sing it, they just dramatized it through uh, the character's actions. And so they effectively did the same thing. So we don't need to express the character's deep void emptiness or want uh, through music, of course. We can do it through the character's action. So we dramatize the thing that brings the character happiness. So some examples. In Toy Story, we start the story by showing the thing that Woody loves most, which is Andy, and playing with Andy. That's how the story starts. We're essentially establishing the thing of deep value to Woody so that we can later threaten it, which will move him to action. In The Incredibles, we are establishing that Mr. Incredible loves being a superhero. He defines himself by his need to be that superhero and to have that identity, to be Mr. Incredible. Now, in Star Wars, we're not defining the thing that Luke loves. We're defining the thing that he wants, which is that he wants to become a pilot. He wants to see adventure. He wants something more than he has. But we dramatize that not through 
Luke singing a song. Obviously, uh, we th- show that through his various conversations, through him looking at the sons of Tatooine. Just very much, he's got this longing, and he doesn't know what to do about it. He has an emptiness within him. So we can also dramatize the moment that creates the emptiness rather than just the the emptiness itself. So we can show the event that created the emptiness, and this is sometimes known as the ghost event, which is the moment from the past that continues to haunt the character to this day. So in Finding Nemo, for instance, we start the story by showing the Barracuda attack that killed Marlin's family, except for Nemo. And this is the event that shapes Marlin. It's the thing that creates his emptiness within him and uh, sort of creates that need for control and to prevent harm and to protect Nemo. We also see this in Twister, uh, where we start the story with Joe's father being killed by a tornado. And that is part of her emptiness. And that's the thing that drives her in her science work. So another way that we can look at this, or perhaps an extension, is that typically these characters with an emptiness may have some false belief about what will bring them happiness. Now, this is typically the case with flawed characters, uh, if it's going to be a false belief. So this is for characters that are going to undergo a positive character arc from some sort of immorality to morality. And the false belief is typically that they'll be happy when they fill the emptiness, but they think they don't know exactly how to fill it. Right? They, they might pursue hollow pursuits, Uh, They might pursue things that are not actually going to fill that emptiness. They're just going to plug the hole for a little bit. Or they might outright ignore it. So now let's look at how we can stir the character's emptiness or how can we move them to action. Now, this is typically the story's inciting incident. It's the first thing that starts the story's chain of cause and effect. And it's the moment where we're going to either threaten something that the character loves, threaten something of deep value, which will kind of stir their emptiness, or we can remove the thing that has been currently filling that emptiness, that that thing that's currently bringing them happiness. We'll look at a couple of other things we can do too. We can offer an opportunity to fill their emptiness, or we can force them to confront it when they really don't want to. That's the last thing they want to do. So let's look at some examples. In Toy Story, Woody wants to maintain his position as top toy, and all he cares about is his position, uh, his, his position as a favorite toy and his relationship with Andy. And so what he needs to learn to do is to share Andy's love with the other toys. But the way that we're going to sort of stir Woody into action or force him to take action is by threatening his relationship with Andy. We're going to make it so that we could potentially remove him as the top toy by introducing Buzz. And that's what's going to force Woody to take action to get that relationship with Andy back. In Finding Nemo, what's the thing that Marlon loves most? It's Nemo. So what are we going to do? We're going to threaten that by kidnapping Nemo, essentially. And that's going to stir Marlon into action. That's going to force him to go after Nemo. And these are the things that create plot, right? Very clearly now, what's Woody going to do? He's going to try to get rid of Buzz. What's Marlon going to do? He's going to try to go find Nemo. In Cars, Lightning McQueen is this super racer, uh, race car drive. Well, he's a race car and a race car driver. And uh, he, what we do for him is we threaten and remove his position in the spotlight, his stardom. That's the thing that he loves most. And so when we get rid of that by sending him to some town on Route 66, he now needs to get back. And so he's driven to action. We can also force a character to confront the emptiness, typically when it's something that they've been avoiding or trying to fill with a hollow pursuit. So for instance, in Good Will Hunting, Will has this ghost event from his past. He was abused as a kid, and he has been doing all he can to avoid confronting that. And what we do in Good Will Hunting is force him to take therapy sessions, essentially. And Sean, the therapist, is going to force Will to look at his past. So essentially, we are forcing Will to confront that emptiness within him. And it's a a crazy journey for him psychologically, but that is what's going to create interest in that story. 
And that's what creates the plot is, is Will trying to psychologically deal with confronting his emptiness. In The Silence of the Lambs, Clarice needs to essentially stop crime. That's the thing that she's driven to do, uh, to solve crimes, to be part of the FBI Boys Club. But she, she needs to do this. It's sort of a symbolic thing because her father was killed uh, by a criminal in the past. And so she essentially, she's driven to do this. So what do we do in, in The Silence of the Lambs? We have Hannibal Lecter force her to confront her past. It's one of the things she's been running away from and trying to silence, but she needs to confront it, essentially. And that's one of the things that Hannibal Lecter uh, forces her to do. In Shrek, Shrek doesn't want to confront the fact that he has been pushing others away and won't allow himself to be happiness by forming new relationships. What's the thing that he's trying to do. He's trying to have his peace in his swamp, right? So over the course of the story, we are essentially forcing Shrek to confront that emptiness or the fact that he hasn't allowed himself to have new relationships in his dealings with Donkey and the princess. So the third way that we can stir a character's emptiness and force them into action is by offering the character something that they think will bring them happiness. So in The Incredibles, Mr. Incredible just wants to be a superhero again. What do we do? We offer him that opportunity. In The Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington has this emptiness in his bones. He wants something more. So what do we do? We show him a Christmas land. And through that, he is incentivized to sort of integrate Christmas land into Halloween Town. He has sort of figured out what's been missing, and that's going to drive him to action. In Star Wars, what has Luke always wanted? It's adventure. So what do we do? We offer him some adventure, and he's driven to pursue that opportunity. All of these characters are driven to pursue the opportunity that is before them uh, that will potentially help them fill that emptiness. Now, it may not be the right thing to fill their emptiness, but they think it's going to bring them happiness. So this stirring of the emptiness, whether we are removing something that a character loves most or we're offering something that a character thinks will bring them happiness, it incites plot. It is the inciting incident, in fact. It is the thing that creates the start of the plot and moves the character into action. So the character will pursue whatever they believe will bring them happiness. Sometimes that's filling the emptiness. Sometimes that's running from the emptiness. Sometimes that's preventing the loss of something that they believe is already filled. And this will create the character's central goal over the course of the story. So the question now is, what's your character's emptiness? What's your character's void? And how can you create an inciting incident that will stir that emptiness within the character? Are you going to remove something that they believe is already bringing them happiness, like Woody in Toy Story? Are you going to offer something that they think will bring them happiness, like in The Incredibles, where Mr. Incredible gets the opportunity to pursue uh, being a superhero again? Or are you going to force the character to confront the fact that they have this emptiness, like in The Silence of the Lambs? Now, it's important to note here that not all characters have an emptiness. Not all characters have a void. Some stories show a character who is full already. They are morally good, and they understand the truth of the story world. And in some cases, it's a community that has an emptiness, or a community that has a moral weakness or a flaw, and it's the community that needs to change. So maybe it's something around the character in the society that is missing or that the society needs to address. And that's essentially in Little Miss Sunshine, for instance. Olive needs to, or, or essentially Olive influences her family to realize that it's not, and specifically her dad, it's not just about winners and losers. It's about measuring yourself by your own standards. So let's look at, uh, let's review some of the things we've learned today about deep characters. Deep characters have an emptiness within them. And when a character has an emptiness, they can easily be pushed into action. These characters typically believe that filling or ignoring their emptiness will bring them happiness in some way. And we as the writer we're responsible for stirring the character by offering or threatening something of value or forcing the character to confront 
that emptiness. This is the thing that's going to create an organic plot that is going to move a character into action and create the rest of the story. Honestly, it's going to force them to fill that emptiness. So if you're interested in learning more, definitely check us out on Kingo.com. We do daily writing tips every single day, whether you are a new writer just wanting to learn the craft or you're a seasoned writer and want a, a quick refresher on some of those things that you may have learned a while ago. Check us out at Kingo.com, K-I-I-N-G-O. And you can find us on Twitter and Instagram, of course, at K-I-I-N-G-O Creative, Kingo Creative. Um, please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, uh, and comment if you'd like to get more involved, please uh, let us know like what you liked about this, what kind of topics you'd like to hear more about, uh, what kind of roadblocks you're going through with your characters. Are, are you having any challenges in your story? I would love to discuss. And if you'd like to get even more involved, definitely check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash Kingo, K-I-I-N-G-O. Thank you so much for being here. And until next time, happy writing.